Welcome to the second Emerging Biotech Company Showcase, hosted virtually by New York Bio and the New York Stock Exchange. The showcase brings together the financial community and a group of New York-based emerging biotech companies that are developing novel therapeutics and technologies that could revolutionize patient care. As part of the event, we're posting conversations with the leadership of these companies that gives more background and color behind the management team and their mission. Special thanks to our sponsors at Fox Rothschild, JP Morgan, Carta, Newmark Knight Frank, and Solberry Trout. Welcome to a deeper dive with Jonathan Rothberg of the Four Catalyzer Companies. Okay. Yes. So, Jonathan Rothberg, fantastic to have you with us. And we are very excited that you're going to join us for New York Bio and the Stock Exchange's uh, second annual Emerging Company Showcase. Uh, I wanted to talk to you a little bit about the impetus and the background for some of your recent companies. We're excited that uh, Butterfly Net is going to be public, but I thought you could maybe take us back to uh, a little bit of back to the beginning and talk a little bit about you know miniaturization of imaging and other detection methodologies. So uh, everything I do, every company I work on starts with something personal. And in the case of DNA sequencing and putting it on the chip, I needed to sequence my son's genome when he was born about 20 years ago. About uh, nine years ago, I wanted to image uh, my daughter. And I understood what happens when you put something on a semiconductor chip because we had all lived it with computing. We had or were experiencing it with digital photography. I had personally participated with DNA sequencing. And so when I needed to image my daughter, I thought, why don't I put an ultrasound machine, one of those $50,000 carts uh, on a chip? So that was the start. But I immediately found out that two thirds of the world had no access to medical imaging. And at that moment, I realized I could help my daughter because I could make imaging inexpensive and easy to use. But I would also be able to address the needs of two thirds of the world. So when you did this, I imagine this is basically the vision for ButterflyNet. Do you, do you immediately you know, step into the lab and put a team on it? I mean, how much of it did you say, well, can I build something? And then after you build something, do you say, is there a company here? Or, was, or did all of that roll into one vision very quickly? Actually, I knew it was going to be a very difficult problem to put an ultrasound on a chip. And I went to a friend of mine, Max Tegmark, who's a professor at MIT. And I said, I would only start the company if he would give me the best student uh, from MIT. And Max said, that's easy because Max used to put himself on the admissions committee at MIT so he could grab the best students even before they showed up at MIT and bring them into his lab. And so he introduced me to Nevada Sanchez. And he said, Nevada was the guy that could help me realize uh, my vision to be put an ultrasound on a semiconductor chip. Okay, so fast forwarding only a little bit, where were you when you said, we can do more with this. If we can do this with ultrasound, we can do this with with other technologies. And when did you when did you think, okay, we can go to to MRI because an MRI machine is much bigger than an ultrasound machine? So uh, around two thousand and twelve, I realized there were two revolutions happening at the same time. One in healthcare, coming from fast or next generation DNA sequencing and one in computer science coming from an area of artificial intelligence known as deep learning. And in fact, I, I love the deep learning so much that I bought the domain name deeplearning.com. But I realized there was an opportunity to combine sensors, taking advantage of semiconductors, and this new revolution in deep learning and AI to create a virtuous circle where you would make a device like the butterfly ultrasound machine. And every time you used it, you'd gather information to, to make it smarter. And that would make it available not only to an expert, 
but my son uses the butterfly IQ to scan the hearts of all his cousins and measure their ejection fraction, and he has no formal training. But that virtuous circle combining an, uh, an ultrasound on a chip with AI allows you to do that. So I thought if it was a good idea to do it for butterfly, then we could take that theme of creating new sensors to gather information people hadn't gathered or, or more information at lower cost and combine it with deep learning. And I thought if that was a good idea for Butterfly, then instead of being a serial entrepreneur, as I had been up to that date, I would become a parallel entrepreneur with each company having the exact same strategy, create data that nobody has, often with a semiconductor device, mm -hmm. pair it with AI and let it get better and better. So I started an incubator for a catalyzer that would be able to support each of those companies. And as I'm speaking to you, uh, we have seven of those companies right now, all following that same strategy of creating devices nobody has made before and tying them with artificial intelligence. So you don't only create an ecosystem with a long tail of applications around the device, but you also create a barrier to entry because as you use the device, and especially as experts use the device, it becomes stronger and stronger. So with the expansion of ButterflyNet around the world, you talk about how two thirds of the world didn't have access to medical imaging technologies. Have there been any impacts from this device that you really didn't foresee? I mean, I think it's interesting that you mentioned that people can use this with little to no training. You know, have you seen already uh, impacts on you know health in other countries or medical procedures in other countries that you hadn't thought of when you first released it? Uh, absolutely, and I'll tell you a specific story around COVID. But at Butterfly IQ, we did want to bring imaging to the two thirds of the world that didn't have it. And there's another interesting magic about that two thirds. Two thirds of the time, when somebody visits a healthcare professional, imaging actually gives them the answer uh, to what ails them. So when we uh, launched Butterfly, we wanted to make sure that we could get it to those people most in need. And we partnered with the Gates Foundation who became an investor. And we were operating in, in 40 countries or 40, uh, regions, low-income regions, with the Gates Foundation, and now another 70 uh, NGOs or nonprofits that we work with. Wow. And so that let us think, wow, we're helping uh, the rest of the world. But in March, the equation shifted. We have been working with the Gates Foundation on developing an application for childhood pneumonia. Every day, 2,400 children die of childhood pneumonia. And so using our software development kit and the Butterfly IQ, they developed an easy to use app and they developed expertise around ultrasounding the lung for pneumonia. Well, actually starting in January, uh, that formula started to shift because when COVID uh, broke out first in China, then in February in Europe and March in the United States, the initial gold standard for diagnosing COVID and COVID lung was a CAT scan, which mm -hmm. is ionizing radiation, slow, very expensive, and very unwieldy. You, for the most part, bring the patient to the CAT scan. Right. And then with COVID, you have serious issue of the next person potentially getting exposed or contaminated mm -hmm. uh, fr from the COVID. So, Quickly, we spun up seminars, taking our learning from what we had done in Africa with Gates on childhood pneumonia and bringing it back to the rest of the world in the form of an application and expertise around COVID lung. Mm -hmm. Dr. John Martin of Butterfly immediately ran uh, Zoom sessions. We set up a special uh, website that you can put a link up to at, at Butterfly. And now we have tens of thousands of probes out in the field and thousands of physicians trained 
to use our probe for, for COVID. So completely unexpected. We thought we were helping somebody in Africa develop an application for childhood pneumonia. And that learning accelerated our ability to bring diagnostics to the rest of the world uh, for COVID. So an important mm -hmm. lesson that you can actually uh, do well by doing good. Absolutely, absolutely. And you know, one of the things where you know nature nature provides a challenge, and when you have a either, either a nimble or faster or smaller technology, it very often provides a solution. When you can't bring all your patients to a, a CAT scan, especially with an airborne respiratory virus. Well, I just wanted to say we had one other interesting, unexpected twist when we were developing the Butterfly IQ and that our chief medical officer, while he was doing uh, the work for FDA reg registration, had the scanner in his hand. So he scanned himself and he found a tumor on his neck and they excised it early and it saved him from having to do chemotherapy. Oh my so goodness. So not only were, yeah, not only were we surprised that we could take what we were doing with the uh, developed countries and help the rest of us, but sometimes you end up helping yourselves in Absolutely. the case of our chief medical officer. Right. So one of the other things that happened during uh, COVID was you launched uh, Detect by Homo Deus. Uh, yeah. And uh, it's now just Detect. We've renamed the company. But in uh, in uh, January, we sent our drug, LAM2, Apilomod, from AI Therapeutics, to mm -hmm. China to see how it would work. And uh, it's now in clinical trials uh, in the United States. And the Gates Foundation, again, tested 13,000 drugs and found Apilomard, our LAM2, the most effective in stopping viral entry. So that was January. Uh, by March, I was disappointed in the initial uh, testing response. The initial test in the United States uh, actually were having problems working. They, they were literally buggy, if you will. Mm -hmm. And so I was on vacation and I happened to uh, have my own lab and had spent the last 20 years developing uh, DNA or nucleic acid based uh, technologies like next gen sequencing. And I thought, you know, centralized testing will have its place like cloud computing has its place. But you'll also want testing point of care at, at your assisted living a facility, at your dentist's office, at your doctor's office. Uh, but you'll also want it at your house, just like you have computing at your house. And so uh, on March 7th, I, I realized that we needed a complement to large scale centralized testing, but a complement that wouldn't give up on the accuracy. Mm -hmm. uh, and accuracy includes sensitivity. Can you see it early? Can you see it before you can give it to somebody so you can isolate somebody uh, before they pass it on? And accuracy includes specificity. When you say somebody has it, can you be sure they have it as right. a false to a false positive? And so uh, on March 9th, I, I called one of my teams and said, guys, uh, we need to refocus and we have to create an at home, easy to use nucleic acid test that's PCR like. It grabs the genetic fingerprint, just like the gold standard. So it has that accuracy, but it doesn't require a $25,000 PCR machine mm -hmm. or a skilled technician. And that's precisely what we did. Uh, we spun up a team. Uh, we quickly raised uh, $80 million. We initially had volunteers, but now we have uh, over 50 full-time people at Detect and uh, 100 people, including volunteers and uh, consultants. And we've produced a super simple to mass produce, and we are mass producing a nucleic acid test. Mm -hmm. But unlike an antibody test that tells you, you know, after you delivered the baby that you were pregnant, right. or unlike an antigen test, our test is designed to be as good as the gold standard, but easy to use at home. And instead of having a la uh, expensive PCR machine, we have an inexpensive base station and you reuse that and you have these disposables 
and we want to compete with the $15 or $30 antigen tests, mm -hmm. but we want to do it in a way that doesn't have the false negatives and doesn't have the false positives so you can have confidence. And I can tell you the test is a game changer. And I know that because four weeks ago, my son tested his roommate before he came back into their apartment. His roommate was positive mm -hmm. and that protected my son from getting COVID. Yeah. And this has happened a few times now uh, where my family has been able to test and protect ourselves. And while we're developing the tests in Guilford, Connecticut, we opened the tests up to the community and we've tested uh, over 1500 times in, in Guilford. And so that's worked really well because we help the community as we work out how to make the test simple enough for anybody to use it. Right. And as i um, recording this, we're in trials now. We have beautiful results, but I can't make any claims yet, of course, uh, since we don't have FDA approval. Mm -hmm. But we're guided by the same principles that the nucleic acid tests use uh, in terms of sensitivity and specificity. So we're, we're hopeful that we'll have approval for both a point of care test where you use a bigger version of this. Mm -hmm. So before Thanksgiving, I tested my family before we got together. I have one of these base stations that holds 12 samples. So you can do 12 at once. And that's mm -hmm. better for a small school or a small office or assisted living. And uh, we, we, we tested everybody before Thanksgiving. And so our goal right now is to finish our clinical trials and get approvals so we can help people at the office and at the home. And I talk uh, often to Dr. Michael Mina, who's at Harvard, yep. and he loved the antigen tests. And I love the antigen tests because they're inexpensive, but often they have false positives. And often the false positive rate can be 10 or 30 times higher than the rate of infection in an asymptomatic population. Mm -hmm. And so it's important to have a rapid backup. I mean, even to this day, when a pregnant woman has an antigen test for HIV, 50% of the time it's a false positive, 50%. And then that woman has seven days of anxiety waiting right. for that antigen test to be confirmed. So antigen tests are fantastic, but they have to be coupled with a rapid nucleic acid or PCR-like test. So you don't keep a pregnant woman waiting seven days to know if she really has HIV, or you don't put somebody in isolation. If you test a thousand people, you don't put 30 or 60 in isolation because of false positives. Right. You quickly take out the tech test and confirm. Right. And, and so just like computing, there's a place for different types of computing. There's a clear test and a pure place for tests like the Broad Institute, which is a centralized lab and can test all our universities. There's a clear test case for the antigens, and there's a clear testing case for an accurate test that can catch people. And we've already caught people who are negative by antigens and then took our tests and they were positive and we protected their families. Basically, All the testing what we do now is under IRB. We don't mm -hmm. have FDA approval yet. So once you get FDA approval, you know, really what this is doing is it's giving broad scale access to fast and hopefully actionable information. And do you see this beyond COVID uh, having, you know, penetrance into either, you know, other diseases or other places where people can actually use this in their day to day lives? Absolutely. We chose a nucleic acid platform because it is a platform. When you develop a test for an antigen, uh, you just have a test for that antigen. Right. When you develop a nucleic acid platform, as we do, you have a reprogrammable platform. So in this package is a cap. When you do your swab, you put it in a collection vial and you put this cap. This cap has all the reagents pre-programmed for COVID to detect COVID. You then mm -hmm. put that in the heater and later you put it in a reader and the reader actually controls that you have a human gene. 
So we test for a human gene as well as COVID. So you know that you did the test correctly. Super right. important. You can't do that with an antigen test. But within this cap, we have two guide molecules or guide molecules that are specific for the SARS-CoV-2 genome mm -hmm. and no other genome. We can reprogram these tablets that are in this capsule in two weeks for flu or any other pathogen. Mm -hmm. So what we've really done is created a platform. And what COVID has done, and we've all seen this, we saw this at Butterfly with the acceleration of telemedicine and teleguidance where people in Europe are actually scanning themselves with a doctor guiding them from home. So we've seen an acceleration of at-home medicine with COVID. So COVID is going to get our at-home tests, our detect tests in the home, but it's just the start. We'll do flu, of course, we'll do other respiratory viruses, we'll mm -hmm. do other pathogens, that woman who now waits seven days to find out whether she really has HIV. Again, 50% of the time, pregnant women have false HIV positive tests. So 50% of the time, the positives are, are, are false. And so now immediately we can have a quick backup with, with our, our detect test. And so this is a platform, it's just the start. And not only can you do pathogens, but you can do susceptibility. Mm -hmm. So right now, people have different outcomes when they get COVID. Why is that? We're working out that genetics. Once we understand that genetics, we can develop another test that will tell somebody whether they'll have a worse outcome from COVID. And the same for any other predisposition. Or even someday, uh, surveillance tests mm -hmm. for recurrence of disease. So it's yep. really a platform. Nucleic acids are universal. COVID happens to have RNA, but it's the exact same chemistry, same learning, same software. We have an app that used with, uh, with your reader, whether you're doing COVID, COVID and flu, predisposition, HIV, mm -hmm. or any other pathogen that you want to test at home. So yeah. This is a platform and COVID is just changing the world. I'd say 10 years of change and how medicine will be delivered to the home over uh, the, the last uh, eight months. Yep, yep, it sounds like it. It's been a huge groundswell of innovation and uh, everything literally from vaccines to detection, it's been remarkably exciting. So uh, what is next for, for catalyzer companies? If you've, if, you've taken on, uh, if you've taken on ultrasound, MRI, uh, at home testing, uh, what else, what else, what are the previews of the coming attractions for the rest of uh, what do you have in store? I'll definitely do previews, but I wanted to do push back in a good way on how helpful the FDA has been during this period, and people don't appreciate it. So you mentioned our MRI. We mm -hmm. were supposed to launch our hyperfine MRI in 2021. As you know, we're on the market now with full FDA approval. And the FDA gave us approval in 49 days wow. for our scanner. And we were able to get our scanner out to community hospitals and regional hospitals and help people with COVID. So this has been really a game changer, not only in terms of uh, telemedicine, personal medicine, but it's been an acceleration of technologies. So four of our companies, as I mentioned, Butterfly, Detect, Hi Hyperfine, and AI Therapeutic are all actively involved in COVID. But we do have three other companies, all wanting to make a, a, a dent on the universe, all using that same uh, virtuous uh, uh, cycle. Mm -hmm. uh, the one you'll hear a lot about soon is Quantum SI. And the way we looked at it is our team gave the world next generation DNA sequencing, and that's changed medicine and research. But DNA tells you what will happen. Proteins actually tell you what's happening. Yep. So we've announced 
that will be commercializing the world's first next generation protein sequencer. And that will really change research and medicine. So that's wow. a little preview. That's we incredible. also believe you need to do more in the home. So uh, we have another chip-based technology as QSI is chip-based uh, to scan your eye. But instead of just look at your eye in two or three dimensions to look at the chemistry that's happening because the eye is the only place where you have capillaries, uh, veins and nerves all in one place. Mm -hmm. And so we'll be able to diagnose through the eye with a new sensor, a new device that will be used point of care and at home and mm -hmm. AI. So that's Tezerac. And uh, last, everybody knows about heart, heart monitors. You get into an accident, they put a bunch of leads on and you get a 3D electrical view of your heart. But there's no equivalent brain monitor. There's no way to get a 3D reading of what's going on when somebody has traumatic brain in, uh, injury, whether it's uh, at, at the ambulance or at the hospital. Mm -hmm. So liminal is making an interface uh, to the brain, a brain monitor. So those are the three uh, ones not currently involved in COVID that you'll hear more about. Quantum SI protein sequencing, Tezzerac, uh, getting you chemistry without taking blood through the eye, mm -hmm. and a liminal, uh, a brain monitor. Well, that sounds fantastic. It also sounds like we're going to have to have you involved in these emerging company showcases for the, uh, for the near and foreseeable future. Uh, I want to thank you so much for, uh, for joining us uh, here prior to, uh, prior to the presentations next week and for being part of our, of our event. I really appreciate everything that you've done. My pleasure, and I appreciate uh, everything you, you do. And, uh, you know, we do have a facility in New York, so we are excited about all things New York. So we have aware of it. in you, New York, Guilford, Connecticut, Taiwan, and Palo Alto. You've got a great team, and we're really excited that you're here. All right. Thanks for joining us on A Deeper Dive with Jonathan Rothberg. We're looking forward to the Emerging Biotech Company Showcase on December 9th. Look for more information on www.newyorkbio.org and follow us on Twitter at New York Bio.